Well, the breaking news of the night, as you just heard, is that we are all going to see Donald Trump's tax returns, finally, as promised. Three years ago on this program, House Ways and Means Chairman Richard Neal had obtained, asked to, to obtain Donald Trump's tax returns, and we told you then that Richard Neal would succeed. He would obtain Donald Trump's tax returns from 2015 to 2020. Chairman Neal has obtained them, and he's going to make them public by the end of this week. Once committee staff has completed redacting Social Security numbers, bank account numbers, and other details that should not be public. Chairman Neal demanded the tax returns from the IRS under a law that allows the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee and the chairman of the Senate Finance Committee, those are the two tax writing committees, to obtain copies of any tax returns they request at any time. The IRS should have handed over Donald Trump's tax returns in three days. Instead, it took a three-year court battle to force simple compliance with a very simple law. At the beginning of this three-year court battle, I assured you right here on this program that Chairman Neal and the law would prevail and that Richie Neal would get those tax returns. Anyone who knows that law and how it has been applied knew that there was no other possible outcome to this case. From the start, Chairman Neal said that he wanted Donald Trump's tax returns in order to monitor how well the IRS was doing on the mandatory auditing of presidents and vice presidents' tax returns. All tax returns filed by the President of the United States and Vice President of the United States are supposed to be automatically audited. The most scandalous revelation so far in what Chairman Neal has announced is that the IRS commissioner appointed by Donald Trump, Charles Reddick, simply stopped the mandatory process of auditing presidential tax returns for Donald Trump. For all practical purposes, the research that was done as it relates to the mandatory uh, audit program was non-existent. The tax forms were really never audited, and only my sending a letter at one point prompted sort of a uh, rearview mirror uh, response. Chairman Neal is now proposing legislation that would strengthen the mandatory auditing of presidential tax returns and write it into law. You will recall that Donald Trump began telling the lie during his first presidential campaign that he could not release his tax returns publicly because they were being audited. As I said at the time, Donald Trump offered absolutely no proof that his tax returns were being audited. And as I said at the time, all presidents running for re-election who released their tax returns were releasing tax returns that were under mandatory audit by the IRS at the time that they released those tax returns. And that's because there is nothing about an audit that prevents the taxpayer from releasing their tax returns publicly. As of tonight, there is no evidence of Donald Trump's tax returns having ever been audited. Here is Chairman Neal's legislative proposal to prevent this situation from ever happening again, where presidential tax returns are not audited. Part of our proposal as well is to require, through this legislation that I have filed, that uh, the IRS within 90 days of a president uh, taking the oath, with cooperation from the Secretary of the Treasury, the mandatory audit would in fact have to take place and the president would be required to submit the documents for that review. I think that it's fair to say that I, this, there's going to be broad support for this, I believe, in the House and the Senate. This takes care of uh, ending any potential confusion or chicanery as it relates to uh, the audit program. The IRS then would be required to publish the tax forms. In a closed-door executive session of the Ways and Means Committee today, the committee voted to release Donald Trump's tax returns. Chairman Neal indicated that Republicans opposed releasing the tax returns, but said, Chairman Neal said that the meeting was, in his words, fairly cordial. And Chairman Neal revealed that the top-ranking Republican on the House Ways and Means Committee, Congressman Kevin Brady, asked 
to participate in the examination of Donald Trump's tax returns once the committee obtained them, and Chairman Neal allowed his Republican counterpart on the committee and the Republican staff of the House Ways and Means Committee to participate in the examination of Donald Trump's tax returns. Congresswoman Judy Chu described her shock at the discovery that the Trump presidential tax returns had never been subject to the mandatory presidential audit. I was so shocked when I saw that the IRS did not comply with the mandate to audit the president's and vice president's taxes. And this is a mandate that's been there for seven, since 1977. I have known Richie Neal for decades. I was happy for him when he achieved his career dream of becoming chairman of the most powerful committee in the House of Representatives. And I was happy for viewers of this program because I kind of assumed that I would be able to have the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee as a frequent guest on this program. He has refused every request to appear on this program since becoming chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. And not just this program. And tonight, he explained why. Let me be specific about a couple of things that I was advised. Firstly, no cable TV appearances to talk about the issue. To be very vague in commentary in the hallways. No fundraising entreaties were to be embraced by sending out a letter saying that I'm doing this or I'm doing that. And no email fundraisers while this was being deli deliberated relating to that sort of, that specific issue in front of us. And uh, I accepted the advice of House Counsel because I knew how perilous this could be, but I stayed with it. 